beautiful song. Speak, Lord, you have my attention. It's going to lead us into the message, and I think you'll see how it ties in. In your bulletins, I uh, hope you are along with it. I don't know if they were stuffed or handed out, but I hope you got this card. It's kind of a summary of where we've been since we started the year in our series, our year-long series on Just Follow, living the life you were created for, the life of being a disciple, a follower of Jesus Christ. And we began the first four weeks just talking about what is a disciple, what's a disciple look like, disciple looks like you when you're acting like Jesus and uh, the the point that it's a lifelong journey we never stop learning and growing and then we for the past uh, 11 weeks and conclude next week our 12th uh, in the series of statements that Jesus made directly things that Jesus said that were said at the time to the people who were there and then, but had an application for later. In fact, a lot of the things that Jesus said to the 12, they didn't really see the connection until after his death, after the resurrection, and then it began to make sense. And it makes sense for you and me. And so these things that Jesus said, these invitations, these imperatives, these instructions are things that we've been looking at. And you see them listed there, uh, number five through 16. So we're about a third of the way through the year, and I hope that you are growing in your discipleship as you use the devotional book. We have these available. If anybody doesn't have one yet, they're free. They're out there in the lobby. And they are weekly devotions written by various members of Grace Church. The one for today was written by Ann Shelton. It's uh, on... The statement of Jesus, come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. And Anne writes, did you say rest? I don't have time for rest. As they say, I've got things to do, deadlines to meet, paperwork to push, places to go, and people to see. That's how she introduces her uh, thoughts for this week and I'll let you read the rest of it tomorrow and in the in the coming days of the week but that's where we are this morning we want to look at Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 to 30 where it says then Jesus said come to me all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens and I will give you rest Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Now, most of us have never seen a yoke. We don't know what he's talking about. It was an instrument carved out of wood that was carved to fit the particular animal that would be strapped on into the yoke a donkey or an ox so that they could uh, pull a cart or pull a plow so you would team up a couple of oxen or a couple of donkeys to do this work Jesus is saying I want you to team up with me and when you're teamed up when when, when a, a pair of oxen would be teamed up usually one would be a little bit stronger than the other and that would be the one that the farmer or uh, the, the person hauling a load to the market would use to set the pace for the pair. Jesus says, my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. In other words, when you work alongside me, you can do what life calls upon you to do. Now, when we talk about I will give you rest, we're not just talking here about physical rest Jesus is not inviting you to come and take a nap with him it goes beyond that certainly physical rest is important we all need that in our lives we'll talk about that a little bit later on but it's much more than that it's spiritual rest it's soul rest it's it's having a, a calm at the center of our life 
from which everything else is propelled. Jesus, in talking about this, is not making up something new. He is actually bringing up an idea that's mentioned in the prophets in the Old Testament. Jeremiah says in chapter 31, verse 25, God is speaking, I will strengthen the weary and renew those who are weak. The message version of this puts it, I'll refresh tired bodies. Ever been there? I'll restore tired souls. The rest, as it's called here, really means a state of living and a state of being integrated around the Father, around God. Fully aware of our need for connection with Him in order for anything and everything else in our life to go right. Jesus is saying, come to me and I'll help you get in that relationship with God the Father that will enable you to live out the rest of your life, the demands, the responsibilities of life wherever you are and whatever you're, you're doing. I will help you get that, that confidence, that calm, and that focused energy that you need to live your life. So get out of your mind the idea that this use of the word rest, when he says, I will give you rest, that it simply means taking it easy for a while. We're not talking about the eagle's version of rest in life. Take it easy. Take it easy. Don't let the sound of your own wheels drive you crazy. Lighten up while you can. Don't even try to understand. Just find a place to make your stand and take it easy. We're not talking necessarily about that. We're talking about a view of life that enables us to uh, be involved in all the things of life, but in a way that it doesn't deplete us and it doesn't wear us down and it doesn't wear us out. One of my favorite writers, devotional writers, is Oswald Chambers. He wrote a book, My Utmost for His Highest. And there's so much enrichment in that book, but Oswald Chambers comes to this verse a number of times in this book, and he reflects on what it means in Jesus' invitation to come to me. And here's what he writes about that. He says, Nothing is so important as to keep right spiritually. Nothing is so important as to keep right spiritually. Certainly it's, it's important to keep our bodies in good shape, to, to nourish them and to rest and uh, keep, keep our bodies uh, uh, functioning uh, up to their, their capabilities. Not saying that's not important. Certainly having our relationships in the right place and nurturing those things are important certainly developing our mind and our ability to think and, and, and question but nothing is so important as to keep right spiritually because everything else in life flows out from that Chambers goes on to say this the great solution is the simple one and then he quotes come to me the depth of our reality intellectually, morally, and spiritually, is tested by these words. In every degree in which we are not real, we will dispute rather than come. Now, what, what he's saying there is, un, until we r recognize that it's God that we need at the center of our life, that we need to build everything up, else up on that foundation, we will go off in various directions, but never getting to the point that we're aiming at in our life. What Oswald Chambers says is that we need to get real. And we come to Jesus to get real ab about life. That's the rest that Jesus invites us to. Not come and take it easy, but come and make it real. Chambers says in number, another place, Rest means the perfection of motion. All day long, we're going through motions. We may be at work. We may be moving and working around the house, caring for a family, uh, going to school. Rest 
as Jesus talks about, I will give you rest, is the perfection of motion. I will give you rest, that is, I will stay you. Not, I will put you to bed and hold your hand and sing you to sleep, Chambers writes, but I will get you out of bed, out of the languor and exhaustion, out of being half dead while you are alive. I will so imbue with the spirit of life that you will be stayed by the perfection of vital activity. It's not a picture of an invalid in a wheelchair, but of life at such a pitch of health that everything is at rest. There's no exhaustion without recuperation. As, as Chambers talks about that image of resting in Christ so that we can have perfection in motion, I'm, I think of a well-tuned automobile where everything is firing just in the right timing. The engine is running smoothly. The wheels are all in alignment, and that car travels with maximum efficiency. That's being at rest for a vehicle. The same is true for us. To be so finely tuned to God's purpose and intentions for our life, so much in alignment with His will that we are at rest even as we go through the motions and the activities of our daily life. One more thing from Chambers and move on. He says about this same verse, come to me and I will give you rest. He says, Christ's consciousness will take the place of self-consciousness. Wherever Jesus comes, he establishes rest, the rest of the perfection of activity that is never conscious of itself. As I read those words in my utmost for his highest, I think about that in terms of how so often I do, and maybe I'm alone in this, you tell me, I get focused on the tasks at hand. I get focused on how much I've got to do. I get focused on things that I'm worried about or concerned about. And getting focused on those activities and those demands and those responsibilities and those burdens begins to weigh a person down. But if we get focused on Christ and realize that he is at work alongside us, we begin to see those things. They're still there. There's still issues in our life, but we see them uh, with the confidence that we will get through them, that, that uh, those things become possibilities for God at work in our life. There's a song we sing at 8.30. I don't know if you've been there. You've, you've probably heard this song. It says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. It's when we focus on Christ that our, the, the other activities of life fall into the proper place. We're not saying that we uh, ignore those things but we do those things with our, our, our eyes first of all on what Jesus is able to do in us Jesus didn't come up with this idea of rest as a brand new thing as we've already said he, he, he finds this in the Old Testament as with nearly everything else that Jesus taught you know Love your neighbor as yourself. That's in the Old Testament. Love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's in the Old Testament. Those are things that Jesus brought in. But Jesus showed us what those really mean, how to live the, the real practice of Sabbath. And so here with rest, it's firmly rooted in the Old Testament. The prophet Isaiah says this in chapter 32. The effect of righteousness will be what? And the result of righteousness will be what? And trust forever. That is, righteousness is living a life that is in harmony with God. That's what righteousness means. And the effect of that will be peace in our life. It will be quietness and trust. My people will abide in a peaceful habitation in secure dwellings, 
and in quiet resting places. Now, Isaiah uses this image of a tranquil setting. You know, I feel that when I go home and I could just relax. It doesn't mean that we just constantly stay at home or in some, in, in some uh, uh, real dwelling, but it, it, it's a state of mind. It's a state of life. It's a peaceful dwelling for us. In Isaiah chapter 40, it says, Why do you say, My way is hidden from the Lord, my God ignores my predicament? Uh, the question is, Why do you think God's not aware of what you're going through? Why do you say that God doesn't care? Don't you know? Haven't you heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He doesn't grow tired or weary. His understanding is beyond human reach, giving power to the tired and reviving the what? Anybody in here ever been exhausted? I need to revive almost weekly. Sometimes Jenny revives me. <laughs> Jenny, Jenny's a, a doctor, and uh, last fall when I wasn't drinking properly, I just about fainted here. She revived me. Reviving the exhausted, youths will become tired and weary. Young men will certainly stumble, but those who hope in the Lord will what? Renew their strength. They will fly up on wings like eagles. They will run and not be tired. They will walk and not be weary. That's a beautiful passage. Many of you keep that close to your heart. They will mount up on wings like eagles. They will run and not be tired. Now, that doesn't mean that God promises that any of us won't get tired from physical activity. It doesn't mean that there won't be times then we, that we have to stop and rest. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that thought in just a moment. But it means that as we seek to live our life in tune and harmony with God in this sense of righteousness, we will be replenished as we go along. Life lived without being grounded in our relationship with God and integrated with His purpose is what the prophet means here by being tired, by being weary and worn out. And that does bring its own sense of, of uh, tiredness and weariness when we are kind of spinning our wheels in life and we know we're not exactly getting things done the way we would like to see them done, the way God would like to see them done. That wears on us. In Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16, it says, This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. So picture this. He's saying, go out where there's a fork in the road. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is and walk in it. And you will find what? Rest for your souls. In other words, it's prophet saying there is a way to go in life that leads you uh, along the path of obedience to God and trusting God it's what Jesus described as the narrow way that leads to life the prophet I, God is saying through the prophet go out and stand at the crossroads and see what the right way is and then walk in it and you'll find rest for your souls but you said speaking of the people in Isaiah's day or Jeremiah's day we will not walk in it in other words it was a decision to live life on their own going their own way doing life the way they think worked best that led to futility and exhaustion being tired and over, overburdened Isaiah chapter 30 says for thus said the Lord God the Holy One of Israel in returning and rest you shall be saved in quietness and in what? Trust shall be your strength. As you look to God, you will be strengthened again, but you refused. And therein lies the problem, friends, for you and me and each of us. We have a choice on how to live, but so often we refuse 
to live our life that way. Jesus himself was well aware of the temptation to live life on the fly, to, to live life on his own, disconnected from the Father. Satan tried to get Jesus to do that more than once, beginning with the temptation in the 40 days in the wilderness and then continuing through his ministry right up into the Garden of Gethsemane. But Jesus kept his face towards the Father, said, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And Satan is always trying to get each of us to get off track, to, to, to forge our own path through life and not follow the path that God has laid out for us. So why do we need this rest that Jesus invites us to and talks about? Life is designed to be lived in rhythm. We are made to function that way. There are rhythms to life that make it go smoothly. And if we get out of sync, out of rhythm, we know it. Think about it. From creation, where Scripture portrays a rhythm to God's creative acts. Remember in Genesis chapter 1, it talks about God said that there be light, and there was light, and so on. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And then it goes on, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And evening and morning the third day. There, there was a rhythm established right there at creation. One of the first commands is to observe the Sabbath. The Sabbath was God's provision of one day in seven where we didn't have to go out and labor in the fields and work hard to make a living. God said, work hard for six days and then use the seventh day as a day set apart to be holy for God's purposes, to be a day of renewal. So there's a rhythm to life weekly. One day resting, six days working. A basic necessity for life is a rhythm. Our heart has to beat in rhythm, doesn't it? Pumping blood through us. We have to breathe in rhythm. We inhale, breathe in, exhale, inhale, exhale. Okay, I want all of you right now to inhale. Don't exhale, just inhale. I want you to inhale again. Don't exhale. I want you to inhale again. I want you to do that for the next 10 minutes. You can't do it. There's a rhythm to life. You can't exhale without inhaling. You can't inhale without exhaling. That's a rhythm. Last week, Grace talked to us about the promises in, in giving and being generous. And the promise is this. When you are generous, generous, when you give, you will receive more. And when you receive and give, you will receive more. There's a rhythm. Sometimes we break that rhythm because we receive and don't give. And we receive and we don't give. There are two bodies of water uh, that stand out there in Israel. There's the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. The sea of Galilee is teeming with fish. When you go visit there, and I hope some of you will go with us, there, there are fishing boats there every day pulling in all kinds of St. Peter's fish and sardines and so on. Down about uh, 50 or 60 miles south of the Sea of Galilee is the Dead Sea. The same body of water runs into it. The Jordan River feeds both the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea. Nothing lives in the Dead Sea because all it does is receive. It doesn't have an outflow. And it's so filled with chemicals that the salt level will not let anything live in it. There is a rhythm to life. Inhaling, exhaling, giving and receiving, work and rest. I like the way the message version puts this passage from my, Matthew. Message version says where Jesus says, come and I will teach you. It says, come and learn the unforced rhythms of life. That's what we need. We need this, this rest to get into that rhythm. Things do not go right for us without this rhythm. 
without this rest, this being centered in perfection of activity we're talking about. We make mistakes when we don't live in this proper rest. We know without physical rest, we do make mistakes, don't we? Uh, it's, not, it's, it's pretty dangerous to be driving if you haven't had enough rest. You can go off the road. You can put other people in danger. We have accidents when we don't live in this proper rest. We get impatient. We get grouchy. I'll, I'll just speak for myself. When we don't have rest. We can get irritable when we don't have physical rest. And when our life is not experiencing the rest that Christ is talking about, that, that being centered in God, we can be irritable and, 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 and uh, whine about things. We can say things we normally wouldn't say. We can hurt others with our cutting words because our life is not centered where it needs to be. You all have seen the Snickers commercials, haven't you? You're not you when you're hungry. You're not you when you're hungry. You are not you when you're not living in this rest state that Jesus is inviting us to come and experience. What finding rest in Jesus does for us, it helps us to be renewed from the inside out, to be replenished, to be refreshed, to be refocused, to be recentered, to be recovered. Even as we are fully engaged in life, we don't have to go on a retreat for this to happen. It can happen in our daily activity. When we are fully engaged in the activities and the demands of daily life and its responsibilities, so how do you come to Jesus and rest today? He's not here. He, he's not going to be walking into the room. But he promised that he would be with us forever. We meet with him in a spiritual sense. Regularly, daily, we need to get ourselves in a quiet place to be with him. Now, it can be a physical place. I like to kind of shut the door in my office a little bit and sit in a comfortable chair that's where I can focus on the presence of Christ in that room with me and get the vision for my day through his eyes get a quiet place maybe it's not a real place but it's a state that you can get in during your day have a go-to meeting place and preferably a go-to time every day where you can establish this rhythm of being, of being in sync with Christ as your leader, the one you are, you are following. Uh, this can be a, a morning appointment, a, a midday appointment, a nighttime, midnight. It doesn't matter when you, you have this time with Jesus Jesus each day it's that you have it in Luke chapter 24 we have a, a wonderful story and it ends up being a very beautiful scene this is the day it's describing the day the first it's the resurrection day the first Easter day when there are two disciples who have not seen Jesus alive yet they're still thinking that he is dead. They were there through the weekend. They saw him nailed to the cross on Friday. They saw his lifeless body taken down and put in the tomb. And then they heard that the women went back on Sunday morning and the tomb was empty. And so they don't know where the body went, but they know Jesus is dead. And as they're walking back to their hometown about seven miles from Jerusalem, Emmaus it's called, a stranger comes up and walks along beside them. It's Jesus, but they don't recognize him in his healed, restored, glorified body. But they engage in conversation, and Jesus goes back and talks from the Old Testament about all the things that it predicted would have to happen to the Messiah. And it says, I like this, I, I love the, what, the way it puts it here. In the Common English Bible, when it says Jesus comes along with them, it says, Jesus joined them on their journey. 
The New Living Translation says, began walking with them. Friends, that's what I want you to have in your mind from this message as you go out of here today. Jesus wants to come along and walk along with you in your journey each day. Whether you're going to school, going to work, going to do laundry, taking care of the family, whatever you're doing, Jesus wants to join you in your journey. He wants to come and walk alongside you. What coming to him does is make yourself open and available to his presence with you. Because Jesus is not going to just come and barge into your agenda for the day until you open up your planner, your day schedule and bring him into it. He joined them on their journey and it changed their life. There's a warning with this message. There's the invitation to come and receive this this living presence of Christ with you in your daily life. But there's a warning. Too many people don't live in this rest that is available. This is the great temptation of life. To take off living our life on our own. Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit after his baptism into the wilderness for 40 days of soul searching during which Satan tried to tempt him to go about his mission in the world and do it a different way. You're the son of God. Turn these stones into bread. You're hungry. You don't have to be hungry. Feed yourself. Go to the temple. Get to the highest point. Jump off of there. Show them that you're all powerful. Satan tried to tempt Jesus and Jesus would not go for it. He kept steadfastly every day to doing the Father's will. We get tempted to go off on our own way. To make choices and take a direction that's not going to lead us to a happy place. Jesus resolved that he wouldn't do anything without making sure it was in line with the Father's will. And therein lie his power of purpose. And that can be available to us too, to make that choice. In Jeremiah it said, find the way, the good way, and walk in it, and you will find rest for your souls. But you said, we will not do it. And Isaiah says, in returning in rest, you shall be saved in quietness, and trust shall be your strength. But you refused. So the choice is ours, yours and mine this morning. Are we going to take the invitation and come and let us experience the rest that Jesus promised. Would you pray with me? Speak, Lord. You have our attention. You have our attention. And Lord, may you have our attention tomorrow and Tuesday, every day of our lives. May we live in this promise of rest that Jesus gives us. May we come and, and avail ourselves of the promise that he will teach us the way to live life. That we can live life linked up with him for his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Help us, Lord, to make that choice, to take that road that will lead us into perfection of activity. In Jesus' name we pray.